Ivory and amber dominates this room, and even though both materials today would be considered extremely valuable, it is next to nothing compared to the prestige they would have generated in a time where exotic goods were considered extreme luxury. Thus most of the items in this room are demonstrations of power, and many were given as gifts. This incredibly beautiful ship was likewise a demonstration, but more in the style of showing off one's abilities. The crafter, seen on this picture, turned this ship out of ivory on a lathe, and made it a sort of a letter of recommendation to the Danish King Frederick III and his court. He was then hired not only as a royal ivory turner, but also as the master of armaments. Turning was also used in the upbringing of the royal princes and princesses, but of course not too much was expected of them. A later princess named Marie, for instance, turned and inscribed this piece, but in reality the only thing she did turn was the centermost column. The rest was of course crafted by a professional. Another, more unpleasant part of power displays can be seen in the fascination of most things out of the ordinary. Sadly, this meant that many people and creatures who were considered God's little wonders made for particularly good entertainment of the nobility of Europe in the 17th and 18th centuries. This type of luxurious power display meant that dwarves were used as entertainment and African children were considered pets on line with royal dogs, most vividly shown in this picture of the coronation of Frederick IV, where you can see an African child next to a large dog standing in a prominent position. The intensified oceanic trade was sadly also a result of an ever-increasing demand for exotic animals and goods, and in this room alone you can find star turtoys, coconut, rhinoceros, ostrich eggs, calabash, apart from ivory and amber of course. The need for exotic animals didn't stop with actual existing ones, it even included fabled horses, like the one in the previous room named Kranich, who supposedly had a very very long tail and the ability to walk on only its hind legs, amongst other traits. As something that really looks almost mundane compared to all these exotic goods, you can find the audio channels connected to the first room. So one should imagine around 15 musicians placed down here for whenever Christian IV needed some easy listening background music or when he wanted to impress his guests. Supposedly it was pretty crowded down here though, a closer inspection of the rooms has revealed bright metallic salts and coal, indicating that a court alchemist was at work here. The notion that gold could be made from other materials was very real, especially for King Frederick III, who actually hired a court alchemist named Buri, who even managed to create this alchemistical gold nugget seen on the ground floor of the castle. Finally, we turn our attention towards the almost 400 year old Rosenborg wine originally found in the casks in the previous room. The current prince consort had it filtered and purified in 1985 and it is still served today at the Queen's New Year's banquet as an exotic and traditional feature. In the old days it was hardly considered a good vintage, so much so that the wine was even accompanied by a waiter carrying a cup of sugar to sweeten the deal. Today it tastes a bit diluted and has a faint shade